Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Savin's World, the gaming channel for the average gamer by an average gamer. And today, we are going to continue our tutorial for Seven Days to Die. In the last episode, we covered the basic layout and the in game menus of Seven Days to Die. This episode, we're going to talk about the basic controls and how to complete those basic survival quests. So let's get started by first talking about the basic controls in Seven Days to Die. The X button on the controller is the jump button. There are times when jumping is needed. Press the X button in order to execute a jump. The triangle button is the activate button. You use this to interact with objects and also pick things up from the ground. The circle button is the cancel button. If you're in a menu or looting a container, for instance, you can press the circle button to cancel out of that menu. The square button will bring up your menu. If you hold the square button, it'll bring up a radial, which will allow you to jump to any menu that you like. The L2 button is your action button. Since I currently don't have anything equipped in my toolbar hotspot that is highlighted, this performs a punching action. If I were to have my torch equipped and press the R2 button, you can see that I do perform a striking motion with my torch. The L2 button is the secondary action button. I will explain this one a little bit more in depth once we get into the basic survival quests. All right, now to move your character, use the left joystick in combination with the right joystick to move your character around. The left joystick will physically move your character, while the right joystick will move the camera angle as you move. All right, next, you see as we highlight this car here, a dialog box pops up saying, press triangle to search damaged white sedan, untouched. So let's go ahead and press the triangle button. And this will open up the looting menu. Use the left joystick to navigate your cursor to the items. Now there are several ways that you can actually loot items from a vehicle or any container. The first way is you hit the X button on the item you want to loot, drag it over to your inventory, and press X to place it in the inventory. You can also hit the square button to take only half of the items available. Another way to loot the items is by clicking either the left or right joystick. If you click the right joystick, you will loot all of the highlighted items. For instance, I press R3 on the empty can, and it automatically loads into the first available slot on my inventory. This works in reverse as well. You press the R3 on the item and it loads into your inventory. You press the R3 on the item while it's in your inventory, and it will load into the container. The last way to loot is to hit the L3 button. Clicking that will automatically loot every item in the container and put it into your inventory. It will also automatically close the looting box. You don't have to hover over the items with your cursor. You can press the L3 button anywhere. I use this looting option quite frequently. 
It's what I call my quick loot option. When you're in a tight spot and you just want to grab the stuff and go, just click that L3 button, grab it all, and run away. All right, so now that we have a basic feel for the controls in game, let's go ahead and start those basic survival quests. As you see in the upper right hand corner of my screen, our first task is to craft a bedroll. It says we need to gather plant fibers, craft a bedroll, and place a bedroll. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell us much more than that. So, how exactly do you gather plant fibers? Where do they come from? Very good question. Plant fibers are all around you. Every little bit of this grass can be turned into plant fibers. Simply walk up to the piece of grass and punch it. You'll notice in the bottom right hand screen there, I gained two plant fibers. Also, if you notice, our active quest icon shows that we have two out of 20 of the necessary plant fibers collected. Let's go ahead and keep punching grass until we get all 20 plant fibers that we need. And there we go! 20 plant fibers have been gathered. You'll notice that on the quest menu, the first objective went from red to green. That means that you have completed that objective. Now, we need to craft a bedroll. To do this, press the square button to open up your crafting menu. On the crafting screen here, you'll notice a few things right away. First, the bedroll has shot right to the very top of our list. Why is that? Honestly, it is because literally it is the only item that we have the necessary components to craft. In the crafting menu, any item that is gray indicates that we lack the components to craft that item. Any item that is in white indicates that we have the necessary components to craft that item. So in order to craft the bedroll, we move our cursor to the bedroll icon and we press X to bring that item up. This will open this menu here. Once we have the bedroll selected, there are a couple of ways to begin crafting. Either you can move your cursor to the craft button, hover over it and press X, or you can simply press up on your D-pad. Notice also, right below the picture for the item, there is a little clock with a set of numbers. This is your crafting time, meaning that this will take 20 seconds to craft. You can also adjust the amount of items that you are crafting at one time. For instance, say I wanted to craft 100 bedrolls. You can either hit the arrow key until you reach 100, or if you click on the little box here, it brings up a pop-up for the desired count. Then you can enter in whatever number you wish, press R2, and that number, if you have the required components, will show in this middle box here. Then simply hit the craft button and you can craft away. Now that we have our bedroll crafted, we have to place the bedroll. First, press X on the bedroll to select it, then drag it to your tool belt. Press X on one of the unoccupied slots to equip this item. Now go ahead and press circle to cancel out of the menu. You can use the R1 and L1 buttons to switch between items equipped on your tool belt. So now we're gonna navigate over to the bedroll. By using the L2 button, that's the secondary action button, we can place this bedroll. And there we go, first quest completed. The next quest is to craft a stone ax. We're gonna need plant fibers, wood, and small stones. 
Plant fibers, we already know how to get. Punch some grass. Small stones can be found almost anywhere lying on the ground. If you really, really, really are lacking for small stones, you can punch stone objects. It takes some time, but you will eventually get small stones from pieces of concrete or boulders, stuff like that. All right, we've got our plant fibers and we've got our small stones. Last thing we need is wood. Now there are several different ways to get wood. You could punch a tree, but honestly that takes quite a while. You can punch these little guys which have a lot less health and break down a lot faster. That is an option also. Plus you can also look for these little woody bushes. Punching those gives you three wood out of one little bush with one little punch. All right, so now let's go back to our crafting menu. Select our stone axe and press up to craft it. The stone axe is a great tool. Get one of these as soon as you can. One quick tip, if you click the R3 button, the right joystick, on an item in your inventory, it will automatically place that item on your tool belt in the first open slot. This is a great way to quickly equip items on your tool belt. All right, so the next quest is to craft plant fiber clothing. For this, we are first gonna need to gather a whole bunch of plant fibers. Let's get to punching that grass. Excellent, we have our plant fibers gathered. So go ahead and open up the crafting menu and let's craft those plant fiber pieces of clothing. Now you'll notice when we open up our menu, I don't see any plant fiber clothing. Interesting. Not to worry my friends, there are a couple options in order to find what we're looking for. First, you can either navigate to the clothing section. This will show all of the plant fiber items. You may also use the search bar. Move your cursor over the black box here and press X. This will bring up the search bar option. Let's type in plant fiber. and press R2, and there you go. All of the plant fiber clothing options are here. So now let's go through one by one and craft exactly what we need. We need, first, plant fiber pants. Press X to select those and press up to craft one of those. Next, we need a plant fiber shirt. Select the shirt, up to craft. Then we need a plant fiber hood. X to select, up to craft. After that, we need a pair of shoes. X on the shoes, up to craft. And last, we need plant fiber gloves. X to select, up to craft. And there we go. Yet another basic survival quest has been completed. Now it is asking us to wear these items. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can actually equip clothing in this game. The first option is to navigate to the character menu. From here, you can either press X on the item you wish 
to equip and move it to the proper slot and then press X to equip it or merely hover over the item you wish to equip and click the R3 button. That will automatically equip that item. Another way to equip an item is if you press triangle while hovering over the item, this will bring up the inspection tab. Now, if we press up on our D-pad, this will equip the item. Let's go ahead and equip the rest of these items. There you go, another quest complete. All right, the next quest is to gather wood to make a wooden club. Now that we have our stone ax crafted, gathering wood is much faster and much quicker. We can go to these little guys here and one hit them to gain 12 wood. The little bushes also are a quick way to gain wood. All we needed was 10, so we now have plenty of wood to craft our wooden club. Let's go back to the menu. One thing that you want to keep in mind is when you do a search in the search bar, that search will remain until you close it out. So go ahead and open up the search bar again, delete the text, and zero out your search bar. This will bring you back to the basic crafting menu. We'll go ahead and select our wooden club and craft. And there we go, yet another basic survival quest down. Next, it wants us to craft bow and arrows. We need to gather wood, which it seems like we have plenty of wood, gather plant fibers, gather feathers, gather small stones, craft the wooden bow, and then craft an arrow. Well, we know how to get the wood, fibers, and small stones, but where do we get the feathers? Very good question. What you wanna do is search around on the ground. We'll go ahead and grab these stones here to complete that. And you are looking for this bad boy. This is a bird's nest. Press triangle to loot the bird's nest. The bird's nest is where you gather feathers. If you're lucky, you may also find some eggs. Eggs can be a rather valuable source of food. So go ahead and loot the feathers, and we might as well take the eggs while we're at it. All right, looks like we have everything we need to complete this quest, so let's go ahead and craft these items. Press square to open up the menu again. Gonna find our wooden bow, craft that, and we're gonna find an arrow, and craft that. Oh, we needed two of those guys. There we go. And there we go, one more basic quest down. Now that we have the wooden bow, I wanna show you a couple of little tricks here. We're gonna go ahead and equip that to our tool belt and, and navigate to actually hold and equip the bow. So now we have the bow in hand. If you look on the bottom right hand side of our screen, it shows that we have two arrows, but we currently can't fire our bow. You press the, the R2 button as much as you want, press it, press it, press it, unless you have an arrow loaded, you will not be firing that bow. In order to notch an arrow onto your bow, you want to press the circle button. Now, we can press the R2 button and draw back the bow. If we were to release the R2 button, we would fire. But I wanna save my arrows, so I'm gonna press the circle button to cancel this shot. Later in the game, when you find firearms, such as the pistol or the shotgun, the circle button is also used to load and reload those weapons as well. All right, let's continue with our basic survival quests. Next up, it wants us to start a base. First thing we have to do is gather more wood. 
since we have our axe, let's go ahead and sprint on over to one of these trees and start hacking away. You'll notice as I'm chopping down this tree that my stamina bar is decreasing. Using tools and gathering resources depletes your stamina bar. Now that we have enough wood, let's go ahead and craft our wood frames. Press square to open up the crafting menu, and let's look for wood frame. Press X to select the wood frame. Now it says we need to craft three, so we can either hit the right arrow to increase the amount of items that we craft, or, once again, if you press X on the black box here, you can actually punch in the number of wood frames that you are going to craft. Instead of crafting three, let's go ahead and craft ten. Press R2, and the number ten pops up in the box, indicating how many items will be crafted. Go ahead and press the up button, and let's start crafting. All right, let's go ahead and get these on our tool belt. Next, we need to place the wood frame. So let's search for a good place to lay these puppies down. Let's go back to the road. We'll just set them right here on the side of the road. We'll press the L1 button to get back to the wood frames. You press L2 to place the wood frames down. One, two, and three. We'll just do them right there in a line. Now this quest is called Start a Base, but we're not actually going to start a base. In the beginning, it is much better just to blow through these quests and get them done as quickly as you can before moving on to find a location to actually start a base. Very, very rarely your spawn point is an adequate place to actually build your home base. Most of the time, it takes some searching. The last objective on this quest is to upgrade the wooden frames. Well, how exactly do we do that? While having your stone axe equipped, go up to the wood frame and pull down the L2 button. Press and hold down L2. And there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the last basic survival quest. This quest is to build a campfire. First thing we're going to need is to gather more stones. Now, I could just run around and gather the small ones on the ground, but since I have my axe, I'm going to put this bad boy to good use. I'll run over here to one of the small boulders and start chopping. And just like that, I've got plenty of small stones to craft my campfire. We're going to head on back down to the wood frames that we placed and upgraded earlier and craft that campfire. Open up the crafting menu, select campfire, and craft. Navigate to the campfire on our hotbar. Find a suitable location to place the campfire, and press L2 to place it down. Success! The basic survival quests are done. Once you're done, this little dialog box will open up, saying, White River Citizen. Good job, survivor. You have proved to be capable with much potential. We have marked your map with the nearest White River outpost location. There, you will find a trader where you can buy and sell goods and trade stories with one of our friendly citizens. Welcome aboard, Noah. You know, Noah, 
Your first letter said that we would be able to join the White River community, the settlement. Now granted, it is nice to have a trader that you can buy and sell goods from, but it'd be even nicer to have a safe settlement to go to to escape all these zombies running around trying to eat us. Your first letter was a little misleading, Noah, telling us that we would be able to join your completely real, completely safe settlement. Instead, you just give us access to a trader and say, oh well, fend for yourself. Thanks a lot, Noah. But once again, who needs Noah? We're survivors. We'll get through this. As you see, the next quest for us to do is to journey to the settlement. The quote-unquote settlement. It's actually just to locate the trader. If you press the square button to open up your menu, navigate to the map section, we will locate the trader on the menu. While you're on the main map portion of this menu, Pressing down on the right joystick zooms out on the map. Pressing up on the right joystick zooms in. You can use the left joystick to move the cursor. By holding down X as you move the left joystick, you can actually drag the map to different locations. So it looks like our trader is to the northeast of us. And it looks like it might be a little bit of a run. You do not necessarily have to locate the trader immediately. You can do that at any time. I would recommend, if he's close, go ahead and hit him up and find the trader. It is always good to know where the closest trader is. Traders can be an invaluable resource in this game. However, if the trader is a long, long way off, you might want to take your time getting to him. You never know what is going to be between your current point and the trader. You might run into some trouble. Also, remember, at 2200, the sun goes down. You want to be indoors well before that time. While getting to the trader will be a definite plus, it does not need to be completed right away. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and make my way to the trader, just so you can see what the trader looks like. I will be right back, just as soon as I have located our trader friend. And here we are, folks. We've found the trader. Let's go ahead and go inside and introduce ourselves. And we have Trader Jimmy. Apparently Trader Jimmy is not very kind. That's okay, we just need him to buy and sell stuff. This is the Trader menu. Up here, it breaks down all of the available items into every category. One area that you definitely want to check will be the Secret Stash. Secret Stash is where he holds a lot of his really good items. And in the beginning, you're not going to be able to afford much. Let's go ahead and sell him some items so I can show you the currency that is used in Seven Days to Die. In Seven Days to Die, the currency you are looking for is Duke's Casino Token. These items are worth their weight in gold, and are the only items that the traders will accept as currency to purchase anything in their inventory. Stock up on these bad boys as much as you can. When you're out looting, if you see Duke's Casino tokens, don't leave them behind. They are very valuable and could mean the difference between life or death. Let's go ahead and press the circle button to exit the trader menu and bid our friend Trader Jimmy a fond farewell. You're welcome, Trader Jimmy. The last thing I want to cover in this video is the skills menu. By completing those quests, we have skill points available to spend. Let's go ahead and hold down the square button and navigate to the skills menu. 
As you see, we have 10 points available to spend. I would caution you not to spend your points on things that can be leveled up naturally. So items like archery, armor smithing, athletics, barter, bladed weapons, pretty much anything that has a maximum score of 100, those items you can actually organically increase while in game. Do not waste your skill points increasing these items. Instead, focus on the areas that cannot be increased by performing actions in the world. By completing the basic survival quests, this gives us 10 points available to spend to increase our skills. The first skill that I would personally increase is called Sexual Tyrannosaurus. This increases your stamina. Stamina is very, very important, especially early on in the game. A lot of the time, you are going to be spending your time running away from zombies. You need stamina in order to do this. You're also going to be spending a lot of your early game time in gathering materials. Stamina is also key in order to gather materials. So the first skill that I get in almost all of my playthroughs is Sexual Tyrannosaurus. We want to get that stamina up as much as we can. Select the skill that you would like to purchase and press up on the D-pad in order to purchase it. This gave us a stamina gain of 20%. Very nice indeed. All right, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We've tackled the basic controls and how to complete those basic survival quests. This concludes our basic tutorial for Seven Days to Die. But be on the lookout because I will be uploading many, many more videos on Seven Days to Die in the future. In future episodes, I will be going over some tips and tricks that I have learned while progressing through the game. I will also be uploading a video discussing the various zombies in Seven Days to Die. But for now, I must bid you a fond farewell. Savin here saying thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in Savin's World. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below with any thoughts, questions, or feedback. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.